Hey guys, Professor Bill, Comic Book University and Daredevil, issue number 22. It took me a hot minute to get to this one, right? Guest stars in this comic book? Yes. Is that a good thing? Possibly. We're going to see. We're going to get there. First, we got to get through who made the comic book. So we got uh, Chip Zardowski on writing and Francisco Mobili on pencils, Victor Olazabra on inks, and Maria Ayacano on colors. On inks, we've got VCs Clayton Cowles, Mark Chekcheko, and Nolan Woodard doing the cover, and bang, let's go from there. So this issue is called Truth or Dare, Part 2. Um, Daredevil has turned himself into the police, and they're not allowed to actually do anything. They're just allowed to write, Daredevil was here, pretty much. <laughs> he moves on. It's like none of the things that they would normally do for booking are they actually allowed to do. They're able to take a picture, but with the mask on. Uh, you could take the fingerprints if you want, but you got to leave his gloves on. Like, what's the point at this point? Um, anyway, he does go to uh, he does go to a jail cell for a hot minute, I guess, because he has to go in front of uh, the judge. Now, this is going to be an expedited case, except that they do still have to do a hearing. And in the hearing, he, a bunch of things go his way, and he's allowed to go back out on the streets on parole. You can't really call him a flight risk because he turned himself in. Now, sometimes that works, sometimes that doesn't work, whatever it is, what it is. And mind you, Chip, Chip was never a lawyer, all right? Charles Soule was, but... Um, yeah, so so none of this is exactly perfect, but it's a comic book. It can't be. Like there's just no way. So some of the a couple of the things in the law you'd you'd really just have to let go. But I think that suspension of disbelief is part of what reading a comic book is all about, right? So anyway, uh the idea that all these things work out in his favor is just like he's got black cat level luck. So he decides instead of working with Foggy and trying to deal with his case and whatnot, he's going to go out on the streets and he's going to try and beat some people up. Why? Well, it wasn't exactly his intent to do this, but he's not going to say no. He goes out to beat a couple people up because he has to make sure that his city is going to be safe before he goes to jail, if he does in fact go to jail. Now, the trick of that is... Um, he's still going to have to deal with the Strom winds, and that is where Iron Man comes into play. This isn't a spoiler, but for crying out loud, they showed on the front cover Iron Man was going to be in this book. They also show that Iron Man was going to be in the book in the previous issue, so Iron Man's in this book. Duh. Um, in fact, in the next issue, they say that Spider-Man's going to be in the book, and at the end of this issue, we get an extra legal defense for Daredevil showing up. Now, this could go either way, and Chip is the kind of guy who's going to slip us a fastball or curveball once in a while, and we're not going to recognize it until it actually moves. So, I like the idea that I'm not so sure what's going to happen next, while at the same time, seeing this character showing up is actually pretty interesting. The only hint I'm going to give you is um, the first issue of Mark Wade's run. That's where this character first appeared. So, this could be really fun what's about to happen next we'll see we'll see anyway um i think that for me the the idea of having the <sighs> iron man i like the idea that daredevil has iron man kind of show up in this it would have been nice if he would have still had the memories of what iron man did to him with the um the oh what was the perfect iron man superior with the superior iron man storyline but i understand i understand the whole you know end of the universe stuff and whatnot anyhow um when iron man shows up it's for me it's kind of a departure from the actual daredevil that we've had for the previous 21 issues where chip just made him this tough as nails you know hard fighting you know, I don't know, strapped knuckle, but street fighting guy into, oh, look, Iron Man is here. I mean, Chip was really focused on the law and everything that was good and bad about the system and what Daredevil, what Matt Murdock was going to have to deal with. He really, you know, Detective North, all this, he really got into the nitty gritty of things. My, my, it, I felt like I had to wash and scrub under my fingernails after reading one of these comic books because it was just so gritty. 
when Iron Man Tony Stark shows up in this issue, it felt like it was just a huge departure. And it's like, you know, when you're watching the Wizard of Oz and Dorothy wakes up in Oz and you realize that, oh, wow, the movie is in color now. That's interesting. Because <sighs> Tony's just so, he's such a departure from actual Daredevil, especially Chip's version of it. Now, make no mistake, I would love, love, and love to see Daredevil being, or excuse me, uh, Iron Man being written by Chip, but we're neither here nor there yet. Yet we still do see a little bit of that part when I talked to you about one of the times that I met Mr. Zardoski and he explained, I would love, love to have Batman um, really analyze the idea that he could do so much more as Bruce Wayne than he could ever do as Batman. And it's more of a, you have to have a 100% departure from reality to think that spending all of his money on a suit and multiple cars and jets and boats and whatever the hell else he's got is somehow going to be better than just putting money into the system in order to, and it doesn't even have to be charity, but just putting money into the system in order to make things work make more jobs better jobs better security better training for the police you know saying give like um uh the the white knight books you know give better equipment to the police like batmobiles you know something along those lines anyway one of the things that i think really changed this comic book when iron man does show up for instance he sees a truck full of ammunition that daredevil saying yeah we're gonna leave this for the police. You know, I beat up these arms dealers and here's this whole truck full of weapons. And Iron Man just kind of blasts them with his repulsor. Actually, I don't know what he uses. He used some kind of a heat ray instead of repulsors and melts the, the, the rifles. That's interesting and all, but I look at it and I'm like, you just tampered with police evidence. You destroyed police evidence. That's a felony no matter how you look at this. You know? It... It was done after the fact. Hey, if somebody puts a gun to Spider-Man's face and he grabs it and bends the gun and throws it to the side, that is, well, that was in the process of the of the fight, you know? You already have to have a suspension of disbelief to believe that these guys can go to jail when it was vigilante justice. Nobody's really making a citizen's arrest that's going a little bit too far, right? Outside of the realm of the potential of a citizen's arrest. But when you have especially since not all states have citizens' arrest. Um, Canada doesn't have citizens' arrest. There's a lot of places, most places don't have citizens' arrest, right? It's already suspension of disbelief there. But when you have Iron Man after a battle that he wasn't even a part of, really, like except for the last moment, after the fact he destroys police evidence, that's a big deal. Now, I get it because it still fits into Iron Man's character that he would destroy the weapons. He would say, I've got a problem with arms dealing because, you know, my own history of arms dealing. It makes perfect sense. But having Iron Man in this book is such a departure from the book that we've been reading. Is that a good thing? Is it a bad thing? We'll have to check in the next issue. And make no mistake, I'm going to check like a mother fathead. But for now, like I said, man, Dorothy just went over the rainbow. That being said, I'm going to bring your attention back to here. Daredevil is wearing actual pants. They're red pants. I, I, he, had a, he must have had a lot of red socks in the laundry that day. Anyway, he's got a pair of... They, they, look a lot like jeans. I guess they're more like slacks. Anyway, whatever it is, you can see in the drawings that they're actually pants. There's several, you know, moments where like he does a, a jumping high kick and you can see the, the creases and the pants and whatnot. It's beautiful art and I love it. Um, I love the belt that's on here, the brown belt to be the only thing that really differentiates from the rest of the costume and, and the belt, it, you know, it hangs down and into the, the holster for his billy clubs. I really, really like this. So this artwork, the new look for Daredevil, especially since we haven't really seen a Daredevil costume on Daredevil for all 21 issues for the most part, 20, 20 or so of the issues. Dude, this was really good. I liked this. I, I really love this new look for Daredevil. Um, all in all. Uh, oh, also there's the threat. The threat. Daredevil might actually get his own iron suit upgrade. That is the reason why on the cover they've got 
horns on this, which, you know, hmm, do I want to see that? What exactly would I have to see that for? What would be the reason why he would have to wear that suit? Also, is Tony Stark being reduced to just being the guy with the suits? It's, it's, it's a rough one. It's a rough one. Anyway, we're going to find all that stuff out as the books continue. This was probably my least favorite of all the issues that were made so far of this Daredevil series. Does that mean I didn't like the book? Not by a long shot. It's just, it. it's a, for me, it was kind of like a, a systems shock. You know, it was an awakening almost. Like I was filled with the Holy Spirit or at least hit with a defibrillator while I was unconscious. Something along those lines. Because it's just such a departure from what we had in the previous issues. Anyway, guys, sometimes you got to shake things up. And I guess 22 issues into the book or into the title, why not shake things up? Anyway, guys, that's going to be it for me. Go check the book out. Probably already did. Professor Bill Comic Book University. Like, watch an ad. Uh, class dismissed.